Hello, hello. So, it's that time of the cycle again. We have a new booster set, the Yu Yu Hakusho Dark Tournament set coming out just seven days from posting here. And so, with that, we have another box opening video, just a little bit ahead of release here. If you're not familiar, the way I like to do these is, you know, we'll go through the packs, we'll open them, we'll look at the shinies, of course. Uh, but I also want to pick a card out of each pack to talk about a little bit, whether it's from a you know competitive constructed standpoint or, or just some other kind of note or maybe talk about draft a little bit because that's going to be a thing with this set uh just to you know add a little bit get thinking about these cards a little bit early uh which is well timed because not only do we have the release tournaments coming up running from february 23rd through march 1st we will also have the wish tournament for those who qualify right on its heels at you know march 9th into march 10th and then a webcam regional right after that so a lot of very quick very fast approaching competitive play for the cards in this set as well as when this set releases we're going to have our first standard rotation in which the my hero academia first set is going to be rotating out and so these cards are going to fill that space and really be a big part of affecting what this future new 2024 standard meta is going to look like so without further ado we have a, a bunch of packs to go through here uh first and foremost i haven't opened this yet i don't know if there's anything extra inside but uh, you might not be able to tell from here but th this this box you can feel that it is kind of stuffed right it is bursting at the seams and i would imagine the reason for that is because there's 12 cards in each of these packs up from 11 before it's about the same size box but we have you know, 24 extra cards to, to squeeze on in here and that's because each pack is going to have a slot dedicated to a retro reprint uh these are most of them are going to be pure reprints that will be legal in standard i believe 35 of them will be but there's a chance you will get a retro only reprint which is a really flashy new card frame uh, that is just a reprint of a really powerful card from the first Yu Yu Hakusho set back in 2019 that is certainly not be fair to have around today, but it is cool to add to your collection and maybe get you into playing in some retro side events and whatnot. So we have those uh, fancy purely retro reprints are going to be some of the high rarity stuff in here. Also, the XRs in this set are limited explicitly to characters and to the secret rares. So there's going to be XSRs and XR characters. We do not know the rate of those, so we'll keep an eye on that and see sort of how many XRs do we get in this box. There's also now going to be alt alternate art ultra rares that we can find. Uh, and once again, I don't believe we know the rate on that. So, and as always, well, not as always, but as it has been for the past few sets, we're going to have chrome rares of the four main team Yurameshi characters, right? Hiei and Yusuke and Kurama and Kuwabara. So all of that cool stuff we might find in here. Hopefully we'll see at least some of that as we go through this. And yeah, so let's get going. Let's open this up. It is, in fact, just stuffed with all booster packs. And we're going to get the, the light on here. No, that's not just shining on the top of the box. Uh, these packs look great. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the orange bar branding. A nice bold dark tournament text i think i don't know if they're going out of their way to pick you know color schemes and stuff that look good with the orange but it seems like everything they do just kind of looks good with this these orange bars on it uh so that's pretty nice and let's see we have the pull tabs are back i've heard that they have possibly either returned to their undaunted raid printer or otherwise uh, done some work with the the new printer that they use for jet burn which ha had some some weirdness uh with the print runs on there and so a little bit of a thin card stock so to say so let's go ahead and open this up you can already feel the extra card in here and the cards possibly being a little thicker we have the final test beautiful card strike master of wind demon plants quick recovery bamboo training slash ginkai spirit gun finger daggers body memorization Legendary Bandit, it's a, a normal rare. Oh, and then the here's the the retro, the uh, the pure reprint is a it's a non foil spirit charge kick, so that comes in as common. We don't actually know. I'm assuming the I don't know if there's going to be a rare. We don't know if there's a rarity scheme on these or not, or if it's all like all 35 of them are equal rarity. But this one is marked as a common, and is therefore non foil. And our character slot is a chew. So, uh, 
you know, what would I be doing if I didn't talk about Spirit Charge Kick? <laughs> this is a, a card with certainly a little bit of nostalgia for me as someone who played a lot of Yusuke back in the 2019 era. And this was a, a pretty big 2x type of card for him. It is a 5 difficulty, but it gives your next attack minus 1 difficulty, so it sort of refunds on that a little bit. You get to play this into another 5 dip without, you know, having to pass a check against the 6, and you also give your next attack a couple, little bit of damage. Importantly, this thing has a 0 low block, it has EX3, it's just a very nice uh, role player type move for a deck you need an attack with a little bit of meat on it, you can use a momentum out, you can use a low block, you don't really want to play a bunch of more 5 diffs, but you can kind of get... 5 diff stats from this without sort of really not technically paying all 5 of that difficulty for it. Uh, so it's just a, a neat role player that, even in, in some early decks, I haven't done a lot of deck building for this set yet, but I, I, I'm still going back to that well and 2x in that Spirit Charge kit from time to time. Alright. Can definitely tell these packs are a little bit different from the jet burn packs the material and things like that all right we're not going to read the names of every common here we'll be here actually all day we're going to look through them on the fly just a lot of uh you know screenshot art for this set we've got ample fight scenes from the show to pull from lively defense armor of the phoenix yenkai i see a shiny back here so what manner of card is this? All right, it is an XR Yusuke, our first XR. It's got a nice foil treatment. It looks like the, the white plate, if you can tell by the by the shine here, the white plate leaves Yusuke standing out from the foil background here. So a double character pack because of the XR. And we'll see if XRs are still one per four packs. What I'm talking about here, I kind of... Armor of the Phoenix, let's talk about this one a little bit. Definitely a, an interesting uh, foil pattern with all of the yellow on, on the card already in the yellow background. It it, it looks equally uh, strange in person. It's kind of neat. But yeah, so this card feels like to me, to, to the extent to which you might want to try to run a Momotaro deck. I know people aren't very high in Momotaro and I'm, I'm not really high either. I... I feel like this is probably the one that you're putting in your momentum to start the game. Uh, not just because you know, the speed boost might help you get more of your other pieces of armor into your momentum and sort of his IDs. He's going to build up a bunch of these armor cards in his momentum and that's how he's going to generate, you know, the plus two, plus three or whatever on all of his moves. But your other copies of this, uh, because of what Momotaro does with the you need another copy of this card in your momentum to get the boost... You know, your, your three other copies of this in your deck are going to be pseudo seven high sixes on four difficulty, which is pretty effective. You know, obviously you're using your character to do this. You don't want to throw away, throw out like stat arguments like that very easily. But I, I think this is the one that I would start with. And you, you land Army of Phoenix. If you can draw another one, you land another one. Now your attacks have two speed and you're, you're kind of rolling at that point. So this is kind of the, the one I like as sort of the go to starter for him if you wanted to try him out. Alright, pack three. Spirit Beast Poo. McCoy, Banshee, Cool Intent. Play, Blanket Keiko Support. Acrobatic, Borrowed Energy. Reshows Meteor is our rare. Our reprint is Spirit Detective. So this is a non foil. It's marked as a rare, but it is a non foil, the, the retro reprint. And then our character is Elder Togoro. All right, so we're, we're learning as we go about how the, how these reprint slots are going to work. It, they might all be non-foil, or maybe there will be some ultra-rare repoints that are foil. But anyway, yeah, Elder Togro. Uh, That's a character a lot of people are excited for. I think the one thing I just kind of want to point out with Elder Togro competitively is that we already have Evil Shigaraki as sort of a known quantity, pretty good character in this format. And he's... Just a, an evil seven hand size character with, with some effects that matter, right? They're certainly drawing some cards here and there is going to matter. The little minus one check matters, but they're not they're not crazy, right? And, and so I don't think there's any reason why Elder Togro, at the very least off of evil, can't be a very viable character. I think it could take one of those Shigaraki decks, put Elder Togro on top of it, 
changed not that many things aside from rotating out set one stuff and, and just have a pretty good deck just just right out of the gate right and then you can do things you can find the elder togro specific tech like obviously he plays um tetra terror onslaught from overhaul secret rare very well plays that out of his discard pile as a four difficulty four high six with echo uh, which is pretty nice but i just want to call that out as you know I think everyone's focused on Younger Togoro as, as a character that's sort of the most obviously good. I think Younger Togoro, at least just the you know, sort of typical, uh, traditional, I guess, at this point, if you were going to call any of the Shigaraki decks traditional or whatever, but the, the sort of straightforward evil list for Younger Togoro seems like a pretty safe bet Younger for Elder Togoro. Seems like a, a safe bet coming out of the gates here when we're not going to have a whole lot of time before these events, right? So if you don't want to play... The younger Togro, the damage boost guy, you want to play something a little more defensive. I would definitely take a look at Evil Elder Togoro. Alright, next pack. Alright, I see some kind of unusual border in the bag here peeking out. Or a slam. Rando Spirit Gun. Alright, this is another normal rare non-foil reprint here. Guabara. An ultra rare Cape of No Return. Man, this thing is back in the game. Alright, so... Not exactly this, but... I think something we're gonna need to process as we move into the format with this new set is there's a couple of these, and, and you know, increasingly some from prior sets as well. There's a lot of stuff that really goes after your opponent if they're leaning on getting one giant dunk move in, right? Cape of No Return, if it's out there and they haven't dealt with it, uh, just removes it from the game, right? It just, uh, nope, it's gone. And so it sort of encourages string strategies, right? But at the same time, there's a lot of giant dunks in this set that you could go for, right? If you can get through your opponent's tricks like this, you can slam in, you know, the 10 mid-10 spirit gun final or whatever. Uh, so it's an interesting dynamic. We'll have to see how it plays out over time. You know, how much people lean into playing the big dunks, playing the anti-dunks. And see how that all shakes out. Oops, pack five. I'm waiting to see if we get a, a retro reprint that's marked as an ultra rare to see if it's foil or not. Stumbling warrior, splatter drop. Oh, we're, we might talk about resting up from this pack. Remember the ape. Elemental advantage. Ice breath. Okay, we got a nice. Hungry for Fame is a rare. One of the things with previews is you don't always process exactly which cards are, are rare versus uncommon or common. Uh, just because of the, the way that previews look. And yeah, this one is a rare and it deserves it. I saw some people kind of down on this card, uh, which was very weird to me. Uh, I, I guess I'm already talking about it, but let's just get a look at the last couple cards. We have Massive Blow and we have a normal Yusuke. Alright, so yeah, we're, we're already here talking about Hungry for Fame. Versions of this card... There have been versions of e-commit pick up a momentum in the past, right? Uh, there's been one that was just a 2-5 that did it, and that was generally considered to be too good. We have the 3-4 version from Heroes Clash that is generally considered to be not good enough. That has a bit of a drawback on it. A 3-5 that just committed to do this as a form was considered to be maybe a little too good. So the e-commit flip on a 2-5 feels about right. It feels reasonable. It's a pretty good way to get this effect into your deck if you want it. Um, without having any, you know, particularly huge power level concerns. So it'll be interesting to see how much play this one gets. Uh, I know some people, I, the thing about momentum pickups is you have to read them as you're discarding your momentum to get an attack, right? Which is a nice rate. It's something that people are happy to play. Uh, people really like the, the three difficulty card from the challenger decks, the, um, leaving the bebop. Uh, and this is sort of in that space. We have Flared Up and Sibling Aura. A Spear Breaker is a common. Alright. Finger Daggers. Steaming Spheres Power. S of Size. And here's Younger Togoro. Trying to remind myself what Steaming Spheres Power does. Okay, yeah, that's fine. The What do we want to talk about here? I kind of want to 
Spirit Breaker a little bit. This is a very simple card, but kind of a little bit interesting. You know, sometimes you, you just want a throw in your deck for the guaranteed momentum. Yusuke in particular makes this a 5 damage for difficulty throw, which is pretty cool. It doesn't pay a big price on its block, uh, which is nice. It is off zone, it dodges high blocks, it dodges, you know, your showdowns, your airy smiles of the world. I wouldn't be surprised if this saw, like, a touch of constructed play in momentum hungry decks. Now, obviously, Genkai can put a bunch of damage on it with her enhanced, so that, that's why it's in her kit. Um, but yeah, I know... We haven't surveyed what this looks like after set one, but I believe the all symbol still has the throw suite that people have gone to from time to time and made these like mono throw all symbol decks. Uh, and here's here's another one. This might be a critical mass situation where uh, the, the Spirit Breaker changes some math on the kinds of decks you can build if you want to go a, a very throw heavy route. It's an interesting graph card too. There's lots of EX and powerful at commons in draft, and, and getting a thing that's just going to get you a momentum is... Could be a pretty high draft pick, actually. Alright, I'm not doing great with the Terra tabs here. We have Spirit Beast Poo again. Banshee, Cruel Intent. Bending Blade. Bending Blade's a cool one. I've got Bat Strike coming in the reprint slot. We have a Rinku. I'm... More excited about that outside foiling than I should be, because there's certainly one that I would really like this to be. Alright. This is the XSR Darkness Dragon Prowess. So, I, I was certainly looking at this hoping it was the Spirit Gun Final, but anytime you open an XSR, you are quite happy about it. These XSRs all look real good. Got here, I've got the, the eyes specifically foiled here. have got the kanji in the background. This is an interesting approach to XSRs in this set. There's a few of them that are not, and this is one of them, that are not exactly the flashiest moves in the world, right? This is a four high, this is a four high seven stun three if you're jumping through the hoops, which is very good, but it's very just sort of generically good. So you, you could put it in any deck where you're going to be paying health as a cost, you know, ideally on your character, right? And this card will be really good for you, but it's not doing anything particularly unusual. It's just very nice and above rate for the decks that can use it. And there's a, a few of them are like this, including the, the Spirit Gun Final I referenced earlier. So certainly a, a really good card and a high rarity, and we got the XSR version of it. It'd be interesting. I wonder what the XR character versus XSR rate is going to be. I'm assuming you're a lot more likely to get an XR character, but again, we don't know. That's our second XR in this box in... Not that many packs, so maybe it's still an XSR per four packs and uh, XSR XR per four packs, and you're just gonna get a lot of characters. I don't really know. All right, forty-five percent power. Oh, I should say this is. Yeah, this is back to kind of the normal card stock we we were used to from Undaunted Raid and prior, uh, relative to Jet Printer. I talked about that a little bit, but we do seem to have uh, either reverted printer, printers or, or fixed the situation that we had in Jet Burn. Acrobatic Leap Kick. Shards of Winter is a rare. It's kind of an interesting one. Pilot of the River Styx. And Karasu, the character I got to do a preview video for. Alright, which of these do I... You know what? I don't talk about No Restraint. This is one I'm very curious to see how much play it, it, it sees or doesn't see. So first and foremost, you want to be on a at least a partially on a weapons theme to, to play this at all. But it is a nice block spam. And discard of momentum for three speed is a good rate. I mean, there are decks that are just putting damage on things that don't have speed access. And being able to turn a momentum into three whole speed is can make quite a difference. You get some momentum stacked up. And now all of a sudden you got three speed on all of them. So on top of whatever your deck is actually doing. I think this one's pretty good. I... I We'll have to see how the, the weapon as a theme plays out. I think Chaos can do a pretty good weapon deck right now. I haven't thought about Air or Water too much. Water has all of those Eraserhead 3 cards, right? Or Eraserhead 2, rather, from the the starter deck, from the Clash deck, from back in Heroes Clash. So hey, there's at least that backbone for Water. I don't remember what Air has uh, outside of, you know, obviously Shishi Wakamaru himself. But uh, weapon theme is going to be one to keep an eye on. Uh, as we move forward here. I almost tried to open this pack without the tab. 
this one down. I think I see an ultra rare. I think we've only had... They haven't separated out my ultra rares yet. I should have done that. Sling error, Master of Thousand Faces. Got some of the usual commons, some uncommons. I just gambles an uncommon. Human Hunter reprint. So nice. It's kind of, I like that on some of these reprints, they did go ahead and give them new art. This is pretty cool new art for Human Hunter. I like this a lot. Jin, my guy Jin. Ooh, and Trace Eyes. One of the more exciting ultra rares in the set. We can talk about Trace Eyes a little bit. So this sure is an attack that pays for its own echo cost. I guess this is also one of those Karasu cards I've already previewed. But just to add on, this card has ally, ranged, and tech as keyword traits, which are all, you know, death and fire ranged for Todoroki 4. Uh, you have some tech coverage in May and in Chronostasis. I don't know if there's a whole lot of ally theme going around on these symbols that I can think of, so maybe that one not quite as relevant, but, you know, the range and tech keywords on this are an added element uh, ranged for Mina 2 as well. And you do have to destroy Ready Foundation. Some, some people have... Uh, read this and not realize that you do have to destroy a ready one so it's it's sort of a five difficulty on the second play and in sort of a sideways manner but you do still get two attacks for one card provided you can get some damage on this three guy gonna be a pretty good one all right i'm just gonna momentarily go fetch my ultras from the other packs just so that i can keep track of how many of each rarity i'm getting here just you know, because that was very all over the place in Jet Burn. So if we get, you know, exactly six Ultra Rares, that'll be like one data point uh, in a positive direction. At least most would say a positive direction for this Dark Tournament set. And I believe I have two so far. Yep, I have the Cape and I have the Trace Eyes. Plenty of box still to go. I kind of want to, I'm kind of hoping to get one of those alternate art ultra rares. Those are pretty neat too. All right. Charge battle aura. Got something going on back here in the shiny land. Sort of junk fighting. The elemental advantage or strike. All right. So this, I want to say or strike like the original or strike in the first set was an ultra rare. So it seems like with the, the regular reprint slots are all going to be non-foil and at most norm, you know, marked as normal rares with this normal rare frame, which I, I guess is fine. I think the thing is the ultra rare frame requires more art space than they're necessarily going to have for these. Uh, but yeah, also Aura Strike's a good one. <laughs> Shishi Wakamaru himself. Ooh, and Ice Sword Execution. Uh, this is, this is going to be uh, a go-to for me. Don't worry too much about the art. This thing is a nicely statted 5 diff, 5 high 5. If you have a momentum, you can make it a 5 high 10. You know, speaking of big dunks, so a little encouraged to, to make sure you get your momentum when you play this thing, but it just commits all copies of a problem foundation in your rival stage. So we're past the days of release. Release is rotating. That was sort of the classic example of like, oh, just name release and turn those all sideways. But uh, there's certainly plenty of non-unique defensive foundations people could be playing a bunch of copies of. If you hit two th cards with this, even if it's not even a, one with a good effect, and this is just a 5-5-5 five, five, five stun too, that's still just fine. Uh, I think this card's going to be quite good. You know, speaking of your know, potential water weapon decks, this would go right in. I think those decks don't have a whole lot in the 5 difficulty slot either. Uh, so this will make sense for those decks. Uh, I, I think we're go I'm going to play a lot of this one. I don't know how much other people are going to play, but I'm going to play a lot of that one. And she shrieks slash. This is nice art for a common screenshot. Big old fiery cut. Defense gamble. Rautogi expertise. Nice and in foil. Aerial recon and he. Oh boy, what are we? What are we gonna talk about here? Aerial Recon a bit. So this is one that's coming back that saw... I want to say basically zero play before, right? Like, actually zero, but... 
When you when you reread it and you sort of map it onto the modern era, once per turn tenacious, after rival discards a card, you get to ready this, right? So this is uh, the Bakugo Four has a card shaped almost just like that, except that that's the only ability on the card. This one can also flip to give you a hand peek. If you're not that starved on foundations and you are playing a discard theme deck, getting to see what they have left, so you can plan out what you're doing, especially as Bakugo, it could be quite good. I I could see. Pretty much any death or void Bakugo deck slotting this in, uh, and maybe they weren't playing the 2 4 before, but you play this version of it. Uh, you know, see what they got. Seeing your opponent's hand is just very, very good in this game. Uh, just letting you figure out, you know, do I have it, right? Do I have enough? Is it actually going to get there? Sometimes you discover, you know, whether they have the barrier shield or not, that sort of thing. Hand peaks are very, very good, and I'm, I'm kind of excited to see Ariel Recon get a second life, even though. I'm not really excited to have that used against me. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a rough one to be sitting across it from. Even if, you know, I say that as if it's ever happened. And nobody, like I said, nobody actually played that card before. But I'm just thinking about it, man. It's going to be tricky having Bakugo having that thing. All right, so kind-hearted, fearsome. You're an upper card. More bending blade. Ogre Boulder. Ogre Boulder is a rare, it looks like. Ah, uh, the old Mob Strike. Oh, we're not allowed to not talk about Mob Strike, right? Mob Strike's crazy. Mob Strike is so good, I put it in decks where it made no sense <laughs> back in the day. And there were not... It didn't show up that much because its symbols weren't very good. But boy, when I was building, you know, maybe not really that competitive decks, Mob Strike still goes right in, even though, you know, the deck itself wasn't that great. Mob Strike was not the problem. So if you think about say Future Charge was a card that people played from the from MHA set 1. And that thing was a 3 mid 4 that drew one card and had a 2 high block. This thing has an, a 1 mid block, arguably better. You know, obviously can't it's not off zone, but nice block for sure. And this thing lets you trade in one card for two cards effectively. So it's like extra bonus Future Charge. And it messes with your rival's hand. They have to trade out a random card for a random new one. And it has this Desperation 3 keyword that says if you're less than half health, this thing's actually 3 difficulty. And it's a 4 high 4 instead of a 3 mid 4. This card is very, very, very good. Uh, I could see this being sort of a go-to 4 difficulty attack for any deck that can make any amount of sense to play it. I'm looking at this Ice Sword Execution out here, the Order Void Weapon. Mop Strike has also an Order Void Weapon. Uh, if there's any sort of weapon theming, you can build off of that. Uh, these two could see play together a bunch. Alright, I've lost track of how many packs we've opened. I think we're about halfway through. Battle Aura. Steel Muscle Explosion. Oh, Breaking the Cuffs is a rare. Okay, that's... That's notable. Thunderous Roar is in here, and we have a Toya. I don't know what to make of Breaking the Cuffs, other than I think I'm pretty high on it to start. Uh, plus three, plus three. You know, the discard a card as a cost doesn't matter if they're dead, right? And if this foundation said destroy plus three, plus three, I, I think that's a lot. <laughs> I, I don't think we even have destroy two, two in this format. We have a lot of... We have Destroy plus four, right? We have Ending the Dream, and this is uh, certainly better than that. Uh, and, and it's got the plus two off zone block. I, I'm going to be putting this in a bunch of decks and seeing what we can do with it. Uh, just having this on the table is a pretty big offensive threat. You know, because it is a destroy cost that has to be ready as to discard a card, I, you know, I don't... I, it could get you up and over on turn two, but... I mean, this is... This is a sugar rush sitting in your stage, right? Uh, this card seems very, very, very good, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to trying it out. Here's some Tornado Charge. Island Twin Rose. Ooh, we have Dimensional Sphere. Pretty nice looking rare. The Spirit Slash and Karasu returns. Alright, where are we at here? Oh, button match quickness. 
This is not so much about unmatched quickness so much as there's a... Hiei's uh, health cost theme is... Runs a little bit thicker than, than we've seen in the... I guess the, the post-COVID format so far. Uh, you know, we have quick to act where if you're at less than half health, something gets speed. This gives you plus or minus speed, but you have to have 10 or less. Uh, he has a, a foundation we might call later that lets you, it's a spam that lets you pay one health on every attack, uh, which is a bit of an old throwback. And then, of course, you know, we saw his secret rare. I will have to see how much this, you know, burn your health away deck theme that, that is sort of being introduced with Hiei. You know, where does that go? Does, does that add up to any sort of real deck? Uh, there, there's some things you can do. Uh, Mr. Compress gets to just put himself at 10 if you really need to be, which is kind of a funny thing to be doing. Um, but I think we'll see a lot of decks running this as well as he is other spam and some other health cost type cards and, and trying to make hay out of that. And curious out on whether or not that's going to get them anywhere or not. about I don't think that shares too similar with you Hojo comes to mind as another character that's in that space all right we get to our commons here no restraints back double fists we have cute host Coco reborn human and our character Shishi Wakamaru uh let's talk about team Dr. Ichigaki I am high on this one uh, these are four symbols. I have gone to search which characters are on these four symbols at least a few times in UVS Ultra. Uh, this is a this thing destroy this thing negate anything. <laughs> Not actually literally anything because you can't negate keywords or characters, right? But anything that negates this wide a range of stuff, and, and it's on an asset, it's not you know it's a little harder for your opponent to touch than a foundation might be. Uh, th this is notable. It, it is hard to describe the impact that they can negate anything has until you're sitting across from it or, or if you're holding it in your pocket. Um, I, I think this card's going to be a little bit slept on early and you know, at some point it's going to show up in like some top deck list that's going to get a little bit popular and that, then people are you know, really going to catch on to how good this card is. But you know, it is always hard to find deck space for assets and whatnot. Uh, speaking of the, the evil Elder Togro deck I mentioned earlier, he rather likes to see actions and assets, so this is a, a very plausible card for him to be running. Um, has the ally keyword if you're able to do anything with that, but I, I would go out of your way to try this card out a little bit if you're not sure on it. That's definitely one where I used to play it to really get a feel for it. Old debts. I think we've got an ultra rare in this pack, it looks like, from the, the silver peeking out at the end here. Protecting Kina is back. Karama. And a dimension sword. This guy is a stun grenade, but for weapons, but not on the symbols of the other weapon themed stuff in the set, which is a little strange. But you know, Kuabara has certainly his own weapons going on. What do I want to go for here? Oh, let's just let's just real quick. Let's highlight a death of Metami. This is good. These symbols, maybe not the life symbol, but death and evil. Very happy to have some nice throw hate on a spam. That's pretty much all there is to it. I, you know, we don't have to say that. Oh, this stops electric jolt anymore because we don't care about electric jolt anymore. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, you know, we were talking about the possibility of an all throws decks early. The fact that three symbols have a spam that stops a throw is pretty relevant. It's not paying for it in its block or its check or anything like that. It's certainly not doing anything else. Um, but a pr pretty good one to have one. Pretty welcome sight for some some of the many seven hand size characters in this set in particular. I think that one is our fourth ultra ring. We have eight packs left, so pretty good so far. It's notable we've only seen two XRs, which, you know, it's, it's, it would not be a surprise if the XR rate in this set is lower just because there's there's not as many different XRs to get. 
All right, final test. Commons here, more so. Got a bunch of gambles. Togaro's dominance, toughest punk, and oh, ho, 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 ho. all right. I do not know exactly how rare these are, but we got the cool shotgun. All right, so this is a retro-only reprint. You can tell the the set symbol is actually the original. Yu Hakusho set symbol compared to the new one is the Dark Tournament Stadium. Uh, yeah, Spirit Shotgun's an insane card. If this was a draft pack, you just pick this. <laughs> it is... It's a little hard to read the text here, but th this thing is effectively a 4 mid-7 throw that doesn't have the throw keyword. Uh, it has a crazy deadlock enhance on it, and for every symbol you manage to get in your card pool that is also on your character, uh, it gets even more damage. Uh, it, it, it also has Breaker 1, just because. J just in case you ever block with it, because it is 5 difficulty. You can't always play it. But, ah uh, yeah, Spirit Shotgun, a real good one. Got the nice, it kind of a... Uh, I don't, I don't know whether to describe this. It's certainly a different look. Uh, it's a pretty cool one. You've got the, the energy on his fist down here in the corner with the three check. Very nice looking card. I've, I've played a few Spirit Shotguns in my day. <laughs> Won a team's card with the Spirit Shotgun deck. Alright, we're just gonna... Where can we put our shotgun just to hang out? There we go. Alright. <laughs> Alright, 45%. Her Yoko form. Ogre Killer. Crimson Sparrow. Yoko Toguro and an Ultra Air Battle or Raw Release. Alright, this looks... This is a little nicer in person than it than it necessarily does in a still with the, the wavy line foiling here. Although Oral is certainly considered to be a good one. Uh, I want to bring up Crimson Sparrow. I think a lot of these reprints haven't necessarily gotten the attention that some of the kit cards have had. And this is another one that uh, was not played at all <laughs> back when it was out. But this one, this coding card for minus two speed is quite good. If you are rich on cards, which we often are in the modern era, there's a lot more card draw and readily accessible card draw and easily reusable card draw now than there really ever has been. Uh, even with passing the torch going away. Uh, discarding a card for minus two speed is, is a very useful option to have. I know we've seen uh, Deku 4's uh, body body rejuvenation has it, uh, and it's pretty effective there. Uh, this one checks a five. It's not even a four check, and if, if you want to, you're allowed to put this thing in your card pool, and I, I don't think this shares with Mandalay, but if, if for whatever reason it is in your card pool, you, you can play it, and then if you hit with an attack, you get to refresh a foundation, which is neat if you have something cool to reuse. Kind of a nice, weird alternate angle, and you can even discard cards for plus one speed, even. Uh, this is a... Uh, it's got the low block. This is a really flexible card that I could see decks running a couple copies of, uh, and just you know, try it out and see what it can do for you. The anatomy returns. Straight malefic grenade. Deleterious bomb. Sword get longer and he. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna ramble about he a bit. I don't have too many super defined thoughts on he, but it it's a very interesting play pattern. So the fact that you have to block him twice means that his poke game is kind of crazy. Right, if he if he plays one attack a turn, unless you want to block twice, he's gonna land his one attack. And you know, that that's certainly a bit of a, a grinder mentality, but he does have minus two speed on all of your moves to try to play some defense. If you can find some access to some card draw in this EA, uh, you you can probably be well on your way. I, I mean minus two speed to everything is you know, a, a great baseline defense to be offering. And you know, at some point they'll they'll start double blocking your pokes, but now they've blocked two moves and you've played one and you know, I, I think people were looking for sort of the obvious giant dunk to try to slam in with him. I think that's probably not where that this ends up. 
you know, I, I think you're just happy to hit your five or six damage, you know, on turn two, turn three, turn four, and, and then they're just within range of whatever it is you might be doing. Uh, so I think he, he's a little easy to underrate. Uh, he, you know, he does return the thing to printed. You're, you're the main bulk of your character is is just landing a six damage move. It's kind of whatever, but I think that the right kind of deck could be pretty good with Ye. Um, but we'll have to see. It, it's it's going to be a tricky one. It's not going to be uh, the easiest build in the world for sure. All right. Ah, oh, dragon. Ooh, wind barrier. Jin hiding in there behind all the shiny wind. Oh, windma's task. That's so much text. Oh my god. It really, you know, having not seen this much text on the new card frames, it really even stands out even more than the original did. That is a lot of text. And then we have Suzuki. Uh, I want to talk, is this, yeah, this one, we were talking about Ogre Kill a little bit earlier today. This is an interesting one. How do you feel about understated attack, but it's effectively stun two, right? It's going to get the stun one on the card, and then the flip one foundation, your opponent's going to have to commit one. You've seen people play net gun surprises, a three mid three stun two, and not be too mad about it. And you also get an asset on the way. Uh, so, you know, we saw Cape of No Return early. We've seen, we saw Dr. Ichigaki. There's a lot of assets that are worth committing. Um, so th this could play more of a role than you might expect to see from a four difficulty four mid three. Uh, of just being a way for these symbols, especially Earth and Fire. I Order obviously has Hacker Extraordinaire. But Earth and Fire's ability to take out assets is not quite so great. Uh, we could see this. You know, uh, It is a fire range move for Todoroki 4. He's looking at a lot of cards in this set that he might consider playing, but he's also lost a lot with rotation. Um, but yeah, I would expect, if nothing else, maybe in some sideboards, people bring in their ogre killers if they need to deal with assets. But that is definitely a thing that you can do with a straight face. Sir Ice. Why? Yuki, a son's love. Huro. And so behind here we have, ooh, Absorbed Energy Strike. Absorbed Energy Spirit Strike. I'm, I'm personally pretty high on this. This is one of those cards where just having it in your deck. You know, it, it's a little bit, it, it's a little bit of an NPE. It's a little bit toxic. Your opponent feels punished for taking momentum. But this isn't that wild, right? It's just going to get a nice big damage bonus, but... It makes your opponent think before they take momentum, and that's pretty good. If they are taking momentum, then you've got this nice, you know, form at seven, form at eight, crack back. This block, uh, sort of a faith shield style block, right? It flips the attack after it resolves, but also gives you a momentum. It doesn't remove itself, but it is a plus two high instead of a three mid, right? And it doesn't, it doesn't shut down a throw or whatever, but getting a momentum out of it, if you, your deck uses momentum, I mean, all in order could always just be running hackers, for instance. No keywords, though, right? So, like, Miryu comes to mind, but there, there's actually no keywords on this whatsoever. Uh, so you have to be a little bit thoughtful about what kind of deck you're putting it in, but I, I'm a pretty big fan of this one. I think I think that one's pretty good. All right, and that was our sixth Ultra Rare, so uh, no, no craziness on that front. And I guess we've... We haven't opened our normal secret rare yet, but we did get an XSR. I wonder if that's how they're going to do XSRs, as they might, like, unusually be in the secret rare slot. We'll have to see as, as more boxes get opened. That would be an interesting way to handle their rarity in a set with, you know, only characters as XRs. This teamwork. Desperate Slash. It's a nice normal rare. Rapid Speed Slash is back, and then we have Genkai. Alright, I have to start looking for... I, 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 we haven't talked about resting up yet, so I was hoping it was in here. <laughs> let's go... Let's talk about Double Fists. Uh, this this one takes a little bit of mental processing. So the, this first Nancy trade-off Echo to get a momentum. 
Uh, so if you don't have the momentum anyway, you might as well do this, right? It's a three high four that gives you a momentum, which is fine, right? That's kind of just okay. Uh, people have played a little bit of the old velocity punch, and at least this doesn't take a foundation away from you, but it does take two health away from you. Um, but that, that's fine. You're ideally playing this because you already have the momentum and then you echo it. And sort of the fun, cute thing you get to do with this is when you use that echo, you then on the echo copy can pay the two health because you're not going to be able to echo it again anyway and then get your momentum back. So this could lead into... I think we saw at US Nats a, a sort of echo-heavy all-for-one deck. And this could play in that space because you have this, the, the Void Fortif Echo List, you have Double Fist, you have Twin Sword Slicer, and you have Velocity Rush, and I might even be forgetting one. Oh, or maybe on a different symbol, you can you can also make a list like that, and you, you can do this deck where you're playing a bunch of Echo moves, and having Double Fist refunding you momentum so you can just keep doing it uh, could be pretty valuable. I, I think there's... You know, I don't know if I'd call it an arch type, right? We'll see if the, that pile even is, you know, good. Does it have a real character you can put on top of it, etc. But it's certainly a deck building angle that you could start to pursue now that's kind of interesting. Alright, what do we got here? Something warrior. We got something, something interesting in the back there. There's resting up. Glimpses, Ice Sword Slash, paying the cost. Double Sword, Tornado Fist. Ooh, my favorite. My long lost. I missed you, Psychic Spirit Glass. <laughs> Kuabara. All right, no, we do, we do have a normal secret rare slot in true 100% unleashed. The gold border on this looks really nice, actually. I, I, I like that quite a bit. Uh, I'm here to talk about resting up, though. I, this is this is one of those weird gated cards that it, it doesn't seem like much, right? It's e-commit minus two speed. If your character's commit is minus three speed instead, you know, whatever. But, like, getting e-commit minus three speed on a one diff is really good. And, and I think characters that can play resting up is going to be a category that people think about. Like, oh, I could play this character or that character, but that character gets to use resting up. Not that you can't play resting up without a character that commits itself on defense, but, boy, when you can, that's quite nice. I'm trying to remember who I was thinking about this for earlier today. Um, but yeah, it, it, suffice to say, it, I think the, the challenger characters, a couple of them have are just expect to commit themselves and they have a tenacious thing. Uh, Yusuke obviously does it. Uh, there's there's someone else that's just slipping my mind that, that I thought was a really exciting... Oh, Chronostasis! Right, I was building off any Chronostasis deck. He gets to play 4x resting up and be pretty happy about it. Uh, he just turns it, he just locks the thing in your opponent's card pool and then his resting up is live. It's great. And he's playing a bunch of breaker cards. But yeah, uh, th this thing, we're going to see a lot of this. Alright, and the last pack. I think uh, we've already done quite good this box. I'm not really expecting anything too special out of this one. If, if we do, then we're doing uh, even better than I might have hoped to do in this box. We got our, our nice retro reprint shotgun. I, I don't, again, we don't know the exact rarity of all the things that are in here at this point. Uh, so it, it's hard to say if this is like a great box or a not great box. But, you know, two SRs and, and the fancy shotgun can't be too mad. Let's see what we do get. That's another resting up glimpse of the past. Ichigaki's back spirit wave. Set the record straight. I told you, Ske. All right. Hiding in plain sight. And then we get Rinku. I, I, I've looked at Rinku a little bit. We'll talk about Rinku a little bit. The This ascending plus X speed thing is is kind of fine. It's nice on a 7 hitter. Kurama's kind of like this too. Where this, this isn't great on a 6-hander. Well, you know, obviously there's plenty of 6-handers that draw cards now. But generally, like your spinners of the world, they have to go find cards and, and figure out how they're going to pass all their checks. And, and on a 7, it's a little bit easier, a little bit more likely that you're going to at some point have 3 or 4 speed on things. Uh, and then this response just kind of making momentum every turn. I mean, for as much as Amajiki gets out of his face-up theme, he, he also get a lot of his value is just always getting momentum all the time. Right, and Riku has that going on, and if his attack lands, he can get two momentum. Right, and, and there can be a lot of value in this format in just having tons of momentum. It's just a matter of finding the symbol and the lineup that has the little stun moves and stuff to add up to make this work. 
uh, is a little bit tricky. And of course, if they have Andy stun that you don't want to run into, you're going to have to run into it, right? If they're playing Elasticity, well, I guess you're going to get to have that, right? But there's none of that stuff is too, too scary, right? So, sort of the, maybe one that would have been the scariest is uh, Summon with Style, which is now rotated. So you know, not too bad, but just a momentum generating machine. Kind of interesting right now. But yeah, that will do it for our Yu Yu Hakusho Dark Tournament box opening. We got to see some cool ones for sure. Let's bring the, the dragon, Darkness Dragon's prowess back on here. That's one I'm going to have to think on a bit. I've done a couple, like, just search for characters that pay health on these symbols. And then and I saw Compress and I kind of went down a went down a rabbit hole. But there, there are going to have to be others. And then we have the Spirit Shotgun here. So yeah, let me know what you think about, you know, any of the takes I had on the, on the cards that I opened here. The It looks like we got, so we got one XR character and one XSR. I don't know if that means, like, like I said before, that, that could be there's normally two XRs in a box. It could be that it's like the one per 18 pack rate that we saw before. Um, but first blush. Feels like a pretty good box. I, I think all the ultra rares that we opened were all pretty good. I don't think any of them are duds. A Dimension Sword might take a little bit of time to find a, a weapon-themed deck that it wants to play, but uh, certainly all good ones. I don't even know how many bad ones there even are in this set. Uh, I, my memory serves the ultra rare suites pretty good across the board. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it, and you know, hope you enjoy the other box openings that are going to be out and about on the content scape. And yeah, have fun at your release tournaments, and good luck qualifying for the wish event. Till then, have a good night.